official as of today. RetroPie 4.6 released with Raspberry Pi 4 support. And you might be kind of confused. If you've been watching my channel, you're like, wait a second, you've been posting Raspberry Pi images for a while now. And um, that's true, but those were not official RetroPie base images brought out by the RetroPie people. Uh, there's a Weird Dirty Gaming base image and there's a Virtual Man base image. Both amazing base images that come pre-installed with a ton of scripts and extra things. But if you just want a bare bones official RetroPie uh, build, it's finally here. However, caveat, it is in beta. So I'll get back to the package of flag, which is really cool in just a second. So no longer is RetroPie on Raspberry Raspbian stretch. That was the problem why you couldn't use a Raspberry Pi 3B plus image on a Raspberry Pi 4. But now everything will be based on Raspbian Buster. Um, it is still in beta. Uh, however, we're going to download it and check it out in just a second. I'll even show you how to burn it to a um, SD card. Raspberry Pi for support, yay! The rest, the RetroPie images are now based. On, okay, we just talked about that. Improvements to the packaging system, and core package. So this is really where it comes down to is that you're just going to have a lot more things to be able to install when you go to RetroPie uh, setup and then you go into install packages. All right, so RetroArch is updated. So you got new GUI can be themed. I mean, if you're on an Android device or something like that, you could have been doing this for many, many years. Um, but it's finally here for the Raspberry Pi. Uh, new notification system um, with badge support. Uh, it supports real CD-ROM with the ability to dump the disk image onto RetroArch. Improved disk control system. And then, hey, you finally get retro achievement support for PS1, Sega CD, and PC Engine. That's the um, ability to you know save your scores and things. Emulation station has been updated. So scraper fixes. Scraper is you know how to get um, artwork on your emulation station. It had some fixes added. Grid view improvement and bug fixes. Theming improvements. We'll see about that. I mean, I still like Hursty's themes and. Um, we'll see what they do with ES themes. New options for disable system name on custom collections and save game list metadata after each modification. Okay, so some more real time uh, improvements there. Added video mode switching support to uh, run command for KMS and X11 targets, SDL2 applications only. They added a new Quake 3 port um, for um, other platforms rather than Raspberry Pi 1 through 3. I imagine that's because you could finally run it, right? We're finally on a single board computer with enough power. They replaced the ZDoom port with the LZ Doom port as ZDoom is no longer maintained. So if you want to still play Doom, you can install that the, the updated port. Amiberry, which is the uh, Amiga emulator, has been updated. Stella has been updated. SDL has been updated. So all these are emulators. Well, Duke 32. Um, bunch of diff. This is a Nintendo DS emulator, Scum VM, Atari. The Nintendo 64 emulator. This is a big deal right here if you want to upscale your Nintendo 64 and play. Uh, this is actually a really good emulator as far as compatibility as well. Uh, now you have Sonic Robo Blast updated to 2.2. And then uh, Opera relabeled to 4DO. And then uh, some experimental modules, Neo Geo CD, and then Redream. Now we've been, you know, we've had Redream for a while now on some of these pre made images, but. Um, now we finally officially have it in the beta. Now this is really cool. Um, I'll put a link to this, but the RetroPie platform support. Um, this shows you all the different devices and all the different uh, processors and then graphics chips. Here you got graphics chips, you got processors, and um, you know what are the compatibilities with the different systems and the different cores. So Emulation Station works for all of them. I mean, we just saw Emulation Station on the PlayStation Classic the other day. Um, this is all pretty simple stuff, but when you get to the Libretto Core emulators, if you're wondering why they put Libretto Core as the main, is that's the preferred core. It's just, it's really, it's more compatible and it's better for your controls to go with a Libretto Core um, emulator. You'll notice when you go down, you go to uh, Optional. A lot of these are not Libretto which is totally fine, you can install them, but just know these often are the preferred emulators for consoles. Um, so then we get into some other stuff. You got DOSBox, you know, there's your Quake 3 source, 
Cody. But uh, this is all not new. A lot of these these ports were already available. They just simply added this compatibility list now, so you can see depending on what uh, device you're on whether this is going to run properly or not. And I don't know if we saw that back on. If you go back to the support page here, they're going to allow with this new update you can actually put these images you can also install retropie on top of an existing raspbian buster setup or on top of you know uh, ubuntu on a pc an odroid c1 c2 xu3 xu4 so for those of you that are new to the single board computer uh you know world the odroid makes some pretty cool single board computers as well and so we might be able to cross install some of these things. Same thing with a computer. I get that question a lot. So that'll be interesting as well. So head on over to their download page. Look, there's a Raspberry Pi 4 button. Click the button, download the file, 7 zip it, extract it, format your SD card, then go ahead and Win32 it, find it, burn it. And if you got a fast SD card like mine, it takes no time at all. So far the controls are being very snappy. Sometimes that configure screen isn't so friendly. Emulation station stock. Um, you go in the carbon theme, they call this. So um, there's the scraper. They got fixed some stuff in there. This all looks the same. They still have screen savers. This all looks the same. I don't know if on-screen help is new or not. I've never clicked it before. I don't think anything, and then no, and then quit. I don't think there's anything new with quit. No. Okay, and you hit select. Okay. Bluetooth, uh, enable Bluetooth device configuration editor. ES themes, we'll check that out after. File manager. Okay, so this is all similar. RetroPie setup. And then splash screen. Yeah, this is all pretty standard stuff. I haven't seen anything super new yet, but there's going to be a lot of the core stuff added here. So you can see there, RetroPie setup version 4.6. Okay. So we're on 4.6. Manage packages. Optional packages. I wanted to install Quake. go so for those of you that um, you know there's those of you that have you know used this for years and this is gonna be really simple which is you just got to install your emulators drag and drop your games on here you know if you want SNES 9x for your Nin Super Nintendo emulator you drop your Super Nintendo ROMs on there and then you're rocking and you're rolling you can install Kodi, all sorts of things. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and just do try Quake out. Hey, I now have ports. Quake Three Arena. All right. My mouse sensitivity is awfully high. There we go. All right, playing Quake 3. All right, so my overall thoughts while I do some fragging here. Um, really cool. It took a really long time to get to the point we're at right now, but I'm glad that they see the bigger picture, and um, I think this is going to be great as far as compatibility across many different boards, and I think this is also you're going to have you know the hacking community, the builders, um, be able to improve on their images and be able to improve on the experience that you all have on these single board computers. You also have the new Odroid build coming out, which is a serious competitor to the Raspberry Pi 4, um, especially for the price point. So I think with the cheaper boards coming out, with everyone being in quarantine right now, we're gonna be able to see some um, pretty cool stuff. It's, like I said, it's in beta. I have a feeling, you know, they're gonna run this for a while, get some feedback, and then it'll get even better. Um, if you're new to the community, the Raspberry Pi 4, you know, as far as, you know, just CPU and GPU um, 
you know, limitations. You know, you, you play Dreamcast, you can play Nintendo 64, you can't really play Wii. Um, some people are messing with the 64-bit and trying to get, you know, GameCube working. Um, maybe a little bit of that in windowed mode, but um, don't get too excited. The really, the you know, the purpose of the Raspberry Pi 4 is the community. It's the, the really small form factor. It's the projects you can do with it. And then, um, you know, it's for retro gaming. You know, the, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s. So um, maybe with the next Raspberry Pi, you might be able to see some more of that. But for now, we're, we have this. And I have to say, it's a lot. And when you really just stop to think about it, what all you could do with this board, it's pretty freaking amazing. So thanks to the RetroPie people for their continued work. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you guys on the next one.